All right, in this lecture, we're going to dive into learning how to work with maps in our apps, and we're going to start with just sort of the basic defaults. I want to get you introduced to everything as we move forward here. So let's go ahead and start a new Android Studio project. We're just going to go ahead and call this Map Fun. Go ahead and hit next. Now it's really important that you have at least API 23 set up here. You can go higher if you'd like to, but we've got to at least have API 23. We'll go ahead and hit next. Now, and rather than just doing an empty activity, we do want to select a Google Maps activity. So make sure you have that selected and we'll go ahead and hit finish. Okay, so what this is going to do is it's going to set up a new project and get us a map uh, inside of our app. So it's going to have the layout for the map all set up. It's also going to have a default location uh, there sort of pinned so that when we open the map, we can see uh, what that looks like. So uh, it's going to kind of get us to a starting point to, if we wanted to use location stuff inside of our app. Now, as part of this, we're going to have to go uh, connect and make an API key with uh, Google Maps. And so you're going to have to have a Google account for that. So if you don't have a Google account, you know, for like example, YouTube, Gmail, uh, whatever it is, you're going to want to go ahead and get one of those because we're going to need it uh, for our app. And so as a matter of fact, that's the very first uh, file that opens up here. It says, hey, uh, before you can do this, you have to have uh, your Google Maps API key, and we need to go ahead and put it here where it says your key here. So uh, basically what we've got to do is we've got to copy this link right here. And come on. And Android Studio is really not great at copying text that goes out long. Or maybe I just have a slow computer. I'm not sure, but... Okay, so we'll go ahead and copy that, and uh, we'll open up Safari here, paste that in. Uh, so like I said, you need a Google account, so if you don't already have one, you need to go ahead and sign in with that. But assuming that you do, uh, we're going to go ahead and say, yes, we want to create a new project, and uh, mm, I don't need to know about features and stuff like that. I do agree to the terms, so I'll go ahead and create that. All right, so this is just taking a second here to get all set up. All right, enabling API. And I'm glad that we were able to walk through APIs a little bit before we got here, so now you know a little bit more about how that works. Uh, okay, so now we've got this. We need to create an API key. Great, we'll go ahead and do that. And it gives us our API key. So we'll go ahead and copy this key and uh, we'll go back to Android Studio and we're going to paste that right inside. All right, and with that in place, let's go ahead and get this running on our emulator to see what that looks like. Now, while we're waiting for that uh, to get all set up and run, I would like to show you a little bit about um, what you can find in here. So, uh, for example, here inside of our OnCreate, let me give you some space to work with. Uh, so we have our on create here. I don't know why that's not going away. There we go. Uh, so basically what we have up here is we have a property called mmap. This is the Google map uh, that we're going to be seeing on the screen. And basically it's these two lines of code here that get the map all set up. It's basically saying, hey, you know, I'm going to go grab this map. I want to get it all set up and I want to do an async, which basically means I'm in the background. I'm going to get this map all centered up, ready to go, stuff like that. But then you also see some interesting code down here where in a marker is added to the app. So have you ever seen on uh, maps on phones before, like there's a little red pin or a red dot kind of showing a point of interest? Well, that's what this is. It's making a point of interest over Sydney, which apparently is at... Uh, negative 34, 151, those are latitude and longitude uh, coordinates there. And it's put some sort of name there to say marker in Sydney so that when you scroll over that, that's what we have here. And so it basically adds this marker to mmap, right, which is our Google map, and uh, it moves the camera, and the camera meaning it moves sort of the zoom of the map to that position there, okay? Uh, so let's go ahead and see, oh, this won't run unless you update... Google Play services, great, okay. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and run through the update stuff here, but uh, I'll come back once this is all ready to go. All right, so the app finally opened up after I got all that Google Play services stuff. There's a little note about it here uh, in the code that they Google left for us, but look at this. 
I mean, we have a fully functional map that we can move around in and look. There's this little marker in Australia, and that's where the map was centered. And if we tap on that, it says marker in Sydney. So notice that this is the same thing that we have uh, from what we had down below here. So for example, if I say like, I like Aussie fries from Outback. <laughs> we'll go ahead and run this and we should see like that, you know, text now showing up uh, inside of our app. So let's go ahead and see what this looks like. Got it. Okay, so app opens up. If we tap on that, look at that. I like Aussie fries. So hopefully you can see the connection between those two uh, and how it all works up. Uh, so you can really move anywhere you want. If you'd like to zoom in, you can simulate that by hitting on the Mac the Command and the Shift key. Or let's see where, yes, Command and Shift key. If you're on a Windows computer, I believe it's Control and Shift. But this allows you to, you know, effectively do like a, a pinch or a zoom uh, on your map here. So uh, anyways, yes, this is how you get it. Now, the other thing that I'd like to show you is also how you can uh, just what the layout of this looks like, right? Like how did we get to this point? So let's open up our activity underscore maps dot XML so we can just see what it is that we're working with. And you'll see we get this thing called a fragment that's a map. And uh, this is, you know, it's got the ID of map. So when we come back here, um, this is how this is all connected, right? R.ID.map, when we did that find fragment by ID, well, we didn't. Uh, Android Studio got it all set up for us, but that's kind of how it's all connected. So it can feel a little bit funky looking at this for the first time because you're like, whoa, all this stuff just sort of magically happened. But just to recap, we got that Google uh, API key here. Uh, we pasted it in and then we got this to work. Now, one thing to note is that by default, that Google Maps API key, if we go ahead and look into this a little bit more, uh, right now it's restricted to only Android apps and for Android apps that use this uh, particular package name. So we actually want to get rid of this and we'll hit save here to update. I mean, if you're going to push something to, to the you know Google Play Store, you would definitely want to lock down your API key so that it was only for there. But for us, we're going to be making a bunch of different apps. We'd like to just use the same key for all those. So, uh, you know, we'll keep the restriction that saying, hey, this should only go uh, for Android apps. I guess if we do that, then we're going to have to add them. So maybe we'll just say none. Um, but yeah, the, the point is, you know, you're going to want to fix that if you're going to go live to the Android store. Okay, uh, so hopefully that went well for you. We're going to keep moving forward with Maps.